I should have moved the mic into where, like, the mic position. Sorry if that got loud. Um, also, should have had a drink first. There's this whole, I don't know, like, getting into the thing, right? It's tough to, like, go rah, and jump straight in. So it's like, there's got to be got to be a thing. It's like small talk before meeting. Um, may you spend less time in meetings. Um, May we all spend less time in meetings. Uh, cool. So today's topic uh, that we're going to start with is learning about Django's testing. And when I mean learning about Django's testing, I mean doing some Django testing. Uh, that's fine. Um, so I've been working on this, setting up my own tutorial for Django, where uh, I went through the official, I started to go through the official Django tutorial. Um, and it just, it didn't work for me. Like, uh, it was tough, like, to track stuff. It threw too much stuff at me one time. It just did not work for the way that my brain goes. Um, you can watch the previous several streams to see me dealing with that and being frustrated with that. So what I ended up doing is kind of going with this whole idea of, I still want to learn Django. Like that's, I want to use that for uh, one of my internal sites. So, and I could have gone and found some other tutorials and I've done some Django work in the past, all this other stuff, but I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to make what amounts to a tutorial. And really it's less about a tutorial and it's more about like my personal notes for how to do stuff. But I took the idea and moved it the one step forward with like, I'll make a tutorial out of this. And it's going to be a tutorial based off the way that I would do stuff, or at least the initial part. Like, I'm not going to write a book about this. Um, and I'm sure there are good books about this, but this is for somebody with my level of experience in working with code. Here's the jump start to get you started and just to get your head around the core concepts that you need to know to get something up and running, and then you can go off and find other things, right? Versus in the Django tutorial, they kind of throw a whole bunch of stuff at you that you kind of don't need to get started. Um, like it's it's like they're giving you like the first three levels and really all I want is the first level. So my stuff is gonna be like, here's just the first level of getting up and running. And then you can make a decision about how you wanna go get the rest of the knowledge um, and, and do the rest of the work. So that's where we are. And uh, so what I got going, um, and, let, and I'm starting to get some of the um, commands in my head, right? So Python, oh, whoops, I got to get into the virtual environment. So source virtual activate, whoops. Got to do that in a directory with, yeah, there we go. And uh, source, Source virtual activate or SVA is just a shortcut function I made to do source then then activate just to make it not have to type all that stuff, right? I'm getting more into doing those little functions for commands. Um, and you could also like you could type like text expander stuff and do it too. Might be another way to do it. Um, just so you actually see the command. But I like this, uh, especially because like so I've got like uh, HD for Hugo deploy, which de deploys my site which is a full on function. So yeah, I'm gonna stick with functions. There we go, I did all that. Yeah, so go into the Hugo directory, run Hugo, add everything to Git, do an auto commit, push it to my personal site, and then run a invalidation across CloudFront to clear the cache. So HD, that's how I deploy my site. Anyways, we're in the virtual environment now. So I've got this example site set up. Um, so I'm just doing work there. Originally I was thinking I might actually work on my kind of work live on the thing that I'm doing, but I'm going to wait until kind of the third time I run through this tutorial or, or I run through my own set to actually build out my my things. Um, but if we do Python, Python, manage, run server, I think. Yeah. I'm going to look, well, I just, I think 127 will get me there faster, yeah. So the first thing I did was I built a home page. Django tutorial, you don't build a homepage, which I don't like. You know what we can do actually real quick? Um, we can put a link on the homepage. And 
Ooh, yeah, we can do a link. That's actually a good one. We can test that. that that'll be the first test that we do and the first test that we get set up. Because um, I don't have test for links showing up yet. Uh, and there's this balance of like, do you test, am I testing Django's functionality or am I testing the stuff that I wrote? And like some, like there's kind of a Venn diagram where there's some overlap into some of that stuff. Um, but because we're getting used to this, uh, we can we can go ahead and do the thing. Um, KB, there we go. So pages, tests. Because so the home page is under, um, and this is me also just walking through this, right? So in, I've got an index.html template. And the way that I think about this stuff is I stack up from template to view to URL. Um, and I need to take that one out there. Possibly this one too. Uh, it's not too loud. Okay. Um, it's too loud in my headphones. I still got to get the, I'm still working to refine. I'd like, I've got more of a refined playlist now and I'm working through all this stuff, but we'll, we'll get there with uh, the solidity of this stuff. So that I don't have to mess with that. Uh, but so we've got this template and then we go up to views. And so the view is here, um, which is just pages when you, when you call index and then, well, so I guess you could look at it from the top down when you're going at it this way. Yeah, so either way, I just like the, the transition, but I kind of, when I'm building the pages, I it was easiest for me to build it, start with the template, and then you go up to the view, which is where you call the template, and then you go to the local URLs, which is where you call views.index, which is, well, and actually, let's keep them all open. So there's a template, here's our views, then you go to URLs, so URLs, when you pass, when nothing gets into it or nothing is passed to it, it goes views index. I feel like I'm hot on the mic. I am. What is going on? Why does it change? I swear it's, it's different. I mean, maybe I'm just a little closer to the mic, but I, I swear it's different. Maybe I'm just screaming. Who knows? Um, Yeah, I'm just a little, I guess I'm just a little closer to the mic. Or maybe it's daytime versus night. I don't know. I just felt a little hot in the mic. Um, template, views. So here's, we're in the views file and here's index. So views.index. I don't yet know what these names are for and about. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, but then we go up to the top level Example is the site and their URLs. And here's where we say, if a URL comes that doesn't have anything in it, so the root of the site, you include pages URLs, which is this one, which then would get past nothing, which goes, which makes the call to views index, which here's views index, which calls pages index, which is that template. And that's how you stack it. Um, and like, so you can send, yeah, you can send data to it as well, right? Um, but it's, uh, when I was first looking at this, I was like templates, oh, okay, that would just be the base of it. But then I just I just put the whole thing in here. So probably what you'd wanna do at some point is pull off you know headers and footers and all that jazz, which I'm sure we'll get into. Um, but that's that's the basic structure right now of how we're, of how we're doing things. And so now what I wanna do is add on the home page, and so you can see here's our hello world. I want to add a link Oops. to checklist. Just so that when I start the site, I've got something there. Um, and then the other thing I should absolutely do is bring up Actually, I need to do it this way. Um, ooh, I just thought of something else that I want to do. So STL, this is my local thing. Eventually, this is going to be replaced with Django. Um, but right now, here's where I keep my ideas. Um, 
set up Hugo draft site to launch sublime text two, three, or sublime, uh, two or three, whatever, two or three for editing. So what I mean by that is on my drafts version or my local version, of my Hugo site, uh, I can see I've got all my drafts turned on so you can see them in red and I've got these edit buttons that launches that page to sublime text two, uh, but I don't, or sorry, to sublime text three, but I actually want to have them in sublime text two because that way I can have two apps and, and go back and forth between them. I've got a bunch of drafts. Um, actually don't know which one. So that's today's showing red. Let's see if this is it. Yeah, okay, so this is the page. So Django tutorial part one. Um, actually, you know what? Let's fix that right now. Uh, and this is weird because it's like it's bouncing around, but that's how you do it, right? So start. Django tutorial history. And then what time are we at? 12.05. Uh, work on links to Sublime Text 2 from Hugo site. I will clean that up so we see it for real. Uh, so here is this only takes a minute. I just want to have the, the note in there. Um, so we're in, oh, we're in Hugo, right? So we need to go to our Hugo draft site, which is sublime text H for Hugo. And so we're in content. It's gonna be in the layouts. Yeah, so there's two there's two aspects to this. Um, whoops, images, no images, layouts. Let's try layouts. So in layouts, in summary, here's the call that we make. So this is the summary code, and you can see. Uh, Here's H3, which is the title. And if it's a draft, we put draft in front of it and there's a uh, a CSS if draft equals true or if, if equals draft true, because in Hugo, you don't say if draft equals true, you say if equals draft true, like it, it moves the operator in front. Um, so if equals draft true, we add this CSS class to it, um, which is what turns it red, and then we prepend it. Actually, I guess, what's this gonna do? Eh, it's not great, but it's better. Uh, and again, if equals draft true, we, we prepend it with draft. So that's how we see this. Um, so then we put our date time right here range so this is getting all the tags and we put links to the tags so that's right here so this is a live coding one and then we come down here and so if equals the hugo environment is development uh we add this link oh interesting it's automatically doing the hugo environment check for drafts because i didn't put that in there and they don't show up on the on the main site so that's cool um, yeah, so if the developments, if we're in the development environment, we provide this edit link to that fires over to my launch pad to my other local site, um, which is what Django will eventually be, uh, replacing. And 
We do open Hugo file, PHP. Okay, so edit. So what do we want to do? Sublime text. Uh, how about we do this? Edit. Now I'm working on like what I want it to look like, right? Because that's important to me. So edit. We got our space in front of there, so st. Three. I just want to see what this looks like first, and then we'll add. So edit Sublime Text three. We need to have a space in front of edit. There we go. Uh, and I want to use square brackets. And maybe make it all caps. I don't know why that's. Oh, the A's. The A tags are have a smaller font size on them here for some reason. I don't know why that is. As compared to the A right there, it seems like because the tags. Why is that? Oh, summary edit button. That's why. Go put that tag in there. Hmm. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, and actually, I'm going to get rid of that CSS tag so it's not cruft in there. Which is assets. That's CSS tail. Did I put it in here. Mine. Summary edit button. Yeah, so that was me. Uh, let's just delete it. I just want it to look nice. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. And that dash will disappear too if it's not uh, if we're not editing. So that's Sublime Text two, and then or Sublime Text three. So we would also have. Sublime Text two. So right now I'm just looking at the spacing of it. There you go. Sublime Text two. Sublime Text three. Open Hugo file, we're gonna call this st2. Like I could, you know, create a parameter or do whatever, but like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some duplication in my uh, in my thing here, uh, but I'm okay with that. Cause here's the, so here's all the file does. Um, grabs, uh, let's see, a function console log. So it, that's like a, it makes a PHP version that throws you can throw PHP func you can throw logs to PHP, which then basically builds a JavaScript console log for you and then spits it out. Um, but so we get the page that we want, parse the page URL, and then here is where we do the open right here. Shell open context. Oh, we're gonna have to do this different. Because right now it's just opening off the default. Uh, it's just doing a, an open command with the default application for MD files, which happens to be Sublime Text 3. And then we open Safari and then we flip to Safari. But what we need to do for the Sublime Text 2 one is.
Um, we're going to need to rebuild the command. So open A is for application, I think is how this works. Applications, sublime text, oops, two. Uh, which at uh, alanwsmith.com prod. I just need to find a file. Nope. That did it. Okay, that fired a sublime text too. Okay, so that's that's the command we need to run. Obviously with. So I'm gonna leave this here for a second. Leave that there for a second. Shell X, I should really look up and see X versus uh, execute versus shell execute. One of them returns and one of them doesn't, I think is the difference, but I'm not worried about that right now. So open, and we, so I'm hard, and again, I'm hard, like I hard code a bunch of this stuff, right? Because, so what? Um, so there's that, there's that. All right, so let's see if that works before we go anywhere else. So refresh this, I think it's already refreshed. So this, oh wow. Went to, why does that look crazy? Down here in the, oh, you can barely see it, I'm sure. Um, that looked like a problem here. Page. No, it is, okay, they're both throwing all that craziness to it, ST2. They're both, so they're both, you can barely see it down here if you're on a smaller monitor, but they're both sending like the full URL string. Um, okay, so Blime Text 3 still works. So what's going on? Where is it dying? It's dying, when it hits launch pad, Unexpected header T string. Huh? Why is that happening? Did I do something funny? Okay, it bounces back. It's coming back. So, like. Context two. Okay, so that's the return header, which is down here. So we're here. Why didn't this work? Oh, 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 oh. okay, I see. We've got. No, that should have worked. Because it's in quotes. Uh, maybe this. Maybe this. Maybe this. Let's see if we do this. Maybe. Again, let's try. Well, let's. Do we have it working a second ago when we just clicked on it? Did we just feed this straight in? What happens if we do that? Does that work? Syntax error, unexpected header. Stand by, what do we do? All right, so I'm just gonna bail. Copy, paste, paste. So now, we're, now it should fire three, right? We'll just make sure 
this is working. Yep, okay, so that fired three. Sweet. Open a, I'm gonna do it this way this time, just to put it in single quotes. Oh, I wonder. I don't know if I had the full. So that worked. So let's hard code that in. Some, rid of some of these. So this is the stream one that we want. That's fine, that's open. That's the stream notes we don't need to have right now. We're in two. So we're gonna put the exact same command that worked on the command line here. Now we're gonna cross our fingers. Back up. Crap. Ah, uh, this is a uh, bummer. Um, so if we do this, and then we refresh. T-string header, what is going on? Shell execute. Oh. <sighs> semicolons. Semicolons, semicolons, semicolons. Close that. Actually, let's bounce. There we go. Let's put a semicolon at the end of this. I'm just gonna see if this works before we put the rest of it in. I think it just worked, but we'll test it one more time. All right, close that, get out of here. There's the file, okay. Progress, semicolons. Semicolons, 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 the name of my Autobiography. I almost said something really dark there, but it's World Health Day, and also, no. Sucks that I can't really make dark jokes anymore. I mean, I can, but like, I have to be careful making dark jokes, uh, which everybody should be, but. Three. So now we want to run the Apple script. Let's see if we need the dot app on it or not. Nope, you don't. So now I'm going to put one here too because I want to have it on the on the other nodes, but that shouldn't be 
hopefully as tricky. Uh, because do we just send it to the same? I wish I could change. The, I wonder if I can change the icons because it like I'm. It's not in my head which one of these is which yet. Uh, Sublime text three is what we want it to do here, and we want to go to our Hugo site, and now we want to go to I think it's posts here. Nope, that's the CSS. We can get rid of this. We can get rid of this. Layout single. Yeah, if development environment is development, or if Hugo environment's development, or if equals Hugo environment development. I'm really curious why they, like what the purpose is of doing that. Um, I've, I've seen a few other languages that do it too. Uh, and it's just, I'm curious. Yeah, so we're just we're just doing the same thing. Uh, it's the same, the same thing, looks like, just with different formatting. So we'll just do actually, uh, yeah, we'll leave that for there for now, just to make sure it works. It's gonna need a break after it though. How is this in my groove playlist? I'm not angry, just. There you go. Looks like I kind of like that. Especially if I can get back to it. Uh, All right, so here's two, which should bring us right back. Yeah, because it also, it bounces you back. So this takes you to a different page. That page launches the editor of your choice and then it redirects you straight back. That's why I'm sending the full URL. So it keeps coming back to this page, which lets me pop the editor and go. So that's cool. I like this. I've been I've been kind of thinking about this for a little while. Uh, it's it's super helpful. Like if I'm editing, so what it lets me do is like if I'm editing the website, like the code behind the website, like I am right here. I would prefer if I'm editing a post to have that in a different uh, text editor so that I've got, ooh, crap. So that I've got, uh, you know, basically so I can alt, uh, command tab, control tab, alt tab, whatever, between the two of them, right? So that's that's why I was after that. And now I've got it, so that's cool. So that was a little detour. Uh, cool. Uh, 33. 40. Back to Django. Testing. All right. So, yeah, there's some stuff. I'll clean all that up later. So now, what are we actually doing? In the 50 minutes we have left before I gotta book it. So I wanna get a test for um, URLs. And Mozilla right. Python developer, nope, Django. I did a look at the Mozilla docs. And they look pretty solid. So I'm gonna just bounce through them a little bit. Uh, I wish they'd put testing earlier. Unit you know, tests, regression tests, integration tests. Yeah, so I've got, I've got a test in. Uh, actually, we can get rid of this as well. Oh, actually, let me commit. All that stuff. Uh, where am I going? Would that rod? Oh, actually, I can do it up here.
feet. And then uh, my launch pads, whatever. It's just kind of all over the place. So I, I do have some tests in here for checklist here, which is funny because the documentation, I think it was on the, was it even on the, some of the documentation I saw basically said, oh, make a new directory and make a test file in there. But then I think it, but I couldn't get those to fire. And then, but this test did, I think the Django, I'm pretty sure the Django documentation said to go there. So here's, here's the basic tasks, tests, um, where we set up an object at a, at a class level. So, and then, so it, it hopefully don't, never changes. I'm still iffy about that. Uh, and then we just run a couple tests to make stuff, make sure stuff works. Um, and I was just testing to make sure the things existed. Like I'm not actually testing too much here because the only the only thing that's really going on is um, oh we can make an admin link too. Uh, is it needs to have a title and a is done check mark. Um, so that's the basic test. Uh, but now what we want to do? So actually we want to test on the home page. So let's get to this tests. Uh, we're gonna want that. I'm gonna leave that open. I'm not gonna worry about views or URLs or URLs right now. Tests. So I want to. I want to test. So the first test is I'm testing the models. I should actually probably. Model test. I want that to be more explicit. Oh, you know the other thing. Do I have? No, I don't. So, ah, you know what we can do now? Look at this. Since we've made an improvement, here's our thing. I want to open this in Sublime Text 2. I hard coded it. Oops. Launchers. There's two. Uh, so in content, why don't we pull this out? Whatever, I'm gonna index. In content, why don't we put that back in? I want that slash. Uh, yeah. Hey, it looks like we got the right file. Okay. So this is all the stuff that we've got in the tutorial so far. Um, actually, let me put those in yesterday's stream notes because that's where they really belong. So on text two, I'm really liking this. Oh wait. Oh, I didn't need to close that. Uh, so Django tutorial. So there's stream notes from yesterday. This is Django tutorial part one, whatever. So now we're going to get down to it, which is testing views. back off some of these things. All right, test structure overview. Yeah, see, this is where this didn't work. This is having you create a test directory. Oh, maybe because I didn't put an init in it. Module, go to module, reach test code, and have separate files from our. I like this structure, but it didn't work.
I'm not gonna fight that right now, but. Create a file, yep. The init should be placed in an empty file, so it's a package. You can create three tests. I wonder if that's it. Yeah, so you can put everything in there, which is what we're doing right now, um, versus putting it in there. Uh, well, actually, let's, since we're here, let's see if we can do this. So those are our launchers, we can get rid of this. Uh, come here. So checklist, new folder, tests, Save as checklist tests test views. All right. I'm going to intentionally break it in here and see if this is actually picking it up now. Um, we need to get into our virtual environment. Test? How do we how do we run tests? Let's just try it. See what happens. Yeah. See, it didn't hit this. Let's make the init file. Uh, what's the syntax for that? incorrectly imported from test this module will be installed okay so it's exploded so it found it now test module incorrectly imported expected checklist is this module will be installed okay I'm not gonna mess with it like maybe some other time that's fine but like that's not it's not a thing to fight with right now. Uh, so we'll just keep putting all the tests in test views. Not a problem. Uh, can I get to that from here? Where am I going? Checklist, tests. So we just want to nuke this whole thing. Delete. All right, now we'll check our test again, see if we're running. There we go. Okay. With shot, didn't work. Uh, what, we, what we do want to do is to just see if we can get that to work. Okay, that's right. All right. So we're testing a model. I think this is too loud. Set up test data, set up. Yep, how to run the test. Cool, this is what we did last night. Here we go. To validate our view behavior, actually, wait. To validate our view behavior, we use test client. Dummy web browser. Uh, change redirects and URL. See, this is test. This is writing test code for something that already exists which we don't have. 
And again, that's where I'd be like, I'd prefer it to be like, and the way that I'm gonna do this. So there'd be a first run that's just like, here's some stuff. And then we'll go through and do a, do test versions of it. I'm just scanning real quick to see. Like that's a lot of code to throw at once. Another another thing where it's like. Eesh. Testing views with forums. Because like what I want to see is, what I'm trying to figure out is if it's worth trying to, here we go, templates. As being called by reviews and allows you to verify the correct information is being sent. There is however no specific API for testing Django that your HTML outputs, output is expect, renders expected. That's fine. Like, yeah, so that's, I'm just trying to figure out like, And that's where I was going back and forth on like, so, and I like, and so the, the fact that it's not there gets me to where I was kind of headed. So like the fact there's no way to test that there's an HTML link on here makes sense, right? Cause then you're testing that, that I don't know. It's just a weird bump. Um, but let me go back and look at the views then for a second. See almost anything about the response. This is displayed at URL authors. So authors list view. This is generic list view, almost for anything but that's about Django. Arguably if you trust Django, the only thing you need to test is the view is accessible at the correct URL and can be accessed using a given name. Uh, if you're using TDD, just start by writing test to confirm that the views displays all authors, patching in lots of 10. All right, so let's look at this. And replace any existing text with the following author views list. Before you import our model, let's use some classes. In the data method, we will number Let's we'll set up a number of author objects so we can test our pagination. See, this is, again, it's just like it's a ton of code. Test view URL accessible by name. Yeah, so I guess we don't want to do this yet. Um, All right, so let's just do this. Uh, Django make URL. Yes, I meant that. Write your first app. URL dispatcher. That sounds helpful. Hello, Jay. How's it going? Uh, what do we put in? Pulls views, there's responses. Details, right on. Depending on whatever time zone you're in, I'm hoping you have good weather. Actually, I guess regardless of what time zone you're in, I hope you have good weather. Or climate, whatever climate you're in, how about that? Uh, what do we find? So here's questions, href polls, questions ID. So it doesn't do any magic. I was wondering if there was, okay, so let's just do, all right, let's just bounce the clients to start with, whatever. Uh, checklist, that's where I'm going. I'm just not seeing like a, Django way to do that. Checklist. 
checklist. Okay. Um, so I guess now what I want to do actually is set up the edits for this. So we'll find, oh, there's my migrations, look at that. All right, back to the good old Django tutorial. And we'll bounce on this one for a second. So, okay, writing more views. Slightly different because they take an argument, okay. URL patterns, so it goes into URLs. I'd rather do these like one at a time. Detail, request, object, question ID. So let's URL patterns, use names, index, use results, name, results. So that's for the URL. So here's our pattern. So here's, all right, we're going to do we're going to do this. Um, and again, I don't know how to back into the tests on this yet. So we're just gonna move forward and then we'll figure out the, how to actually do the tests. So I wanna start with, the, again, I wanna start with the templates. Uh, so we'll do that and I'm just gonna call this checklist item. Oops, it's already there. So there's our template. Then I'm gonna go up to views. Probably needs to be like that. Request, I just wanted to get it to show up first. So I'm not gonna send it, like I just wanna do a tone test and make sure I can get the thing to be there. Uh, oh, but I have to do the URL, okay. Uh, I'm actually gonna go back and rename that because I want the names to be the same. Oops, I don't know where I'm going. We're gonna do it from here. All right, so if we just go to, okay, so that's our view. Then we go back up one more to the URL. And to URL, we're gonna do this. Checklist item. And that goes to checklist item. I still don't know what this does. All right, so let's just see what happens at this point. I'm gonna bring this all over here. Wah wah. Context is not defined. All right, so that's, I think, in our views. Oh, context wasn't defined. So let's just do, like, we're gonna wanna pass something to it, but we're just gonna pass an empty context right now. Checklist item, okay, so we got down to it. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, so the question is, so, all right, how do we wanna do this in the docs? Um, next, set up. Checklist item. Build template with whatever. Body checklist item. Add 
add so template view URL add view function or method I guess again this is not the final way that we're gonna to want to do this but it's how I need to figure it out add URL urls.py All right, we'll do this just so we can see the full thing. All right, so that gets us to it. But now we need to, pa okay, and then we pass so we're going to want to pass a ID to it. All right, that can go away. Tests, we can't do yet, or we don't know how to do yet. Checklist item. So checklist item ID. I'll get better names here later. So this should fail, right? Because we're sending, it's not picking up. Yeah, we're missing an argument, right? And so in our views, test views, that's not what we want. Oh, what did I do? Oh, yeah, that's, whoa, what's going on? Yes. Oh, 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 that's the one that I duplicated that didn't work. Okay, bye-bye. So in our URLs, we have that. Views. Oh, okay. So how then do we pass in in our URLs? And it question ID. So again, this is a problem with this. They throw so much stuff at you, you can't see what the individual parts are. So checklist item. So checklist. Oh, okay, so the way that they're doing it like this I think oops yeah so we took that out right so there's our checklist and if we do a one right here checklist item okay so that gets us there So I would actually prefer, so how do you make, so I want to hard code the URLs for now, because I want to have those, I want to, I want to progress through errors instead of trying to just make everything green, because it's easier to fight through, or not fight through, but to, to walk through the error messages to uh, let them tell you what to do next. So we're going to do this. Checklists, templates, checklists, index. Um, busted that all kinds of different ways. How about if we actually do this? So if we're in checklist, I, if we're in checklists, 
Do we just do one? Yes. Okay. So here we want to do setup link in checklist templates checklist index.html to point to individual checklists first so you can see the error message error arrow arrow yeah it's arrow it's how you spell error now So right now you can hard hard code that. I don't want to. I'm not going to mess with that right now. I can I can TK that and come back. So that gets us to the page, right? Sweet. Uh, nice, 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 nice. Okay. Put you over here. All right, so question ID. So when you request a page, Django load my site URL. Because it's pointed to root URL. If it finds name root variable, transverse versus pattern in order. After finding the match polls slash, it strips off polls slash and sends the remaining 34 slash to the polls for further processing. There it matches the question slash, resulting in the color details view, like so. Details. So again, this is like I this is too much for a basic tutorial. I think these should actually do something. Um polls index. Yeah, so we've got this views that's index. Render, again, you should have done that first. Racing at 404, you should have done this first. Where's the model for, so now we need to back up into the model because we want to get, oh, here's how we remove hard code URLs and templates. We'll do that in a minute. Names facing URLs, that's fine. Where's the model? Question, index. Leave the rest of the views, details, results unchanged. Where are they? Oh, that's in views. I just loop. I feel like I just looped. Yup. So is the model defined in the previous thing? Or maybe just do it in views. Well, hang on. So models, checklist item. Oh, okay. So you could just call the checklist item. Okay, that makes sense. Writing more views. There's a views. There's where you set up your views. Writing views that actually do something. So here's your index, right? Which we've got. So that's where you build the index page. Update our index view and polls views using this template. 
I just did that. Rising 4-4. Four, four. I need to go back and look at this. So here's a detail. Okay. Here's a detail view region. Question, get object of 44, question. PK equals question ID, render pulls details used. Okay, so this, I think we can put in our views. This'll be our checklist item. So we should be able to leave that there. It shouldn't mess with anything. Question. Oh, interesting. It's doing con it's doing the context different here. Mm. Uh, okay, we're just gonna walk through this. Checklist item. I don't know if that matters. That it's the same object. Let's just do that. And this is going to be a checklist item. All right, let's just see if that explodes. It explodes. Get object of 404 is not defined. Sweet. Question I see is not defined. That's okay, because we want this. So again, we're just using the errors to just bang through and let them tell us what we need to do. We can comment all this out. Uh-oh, broke it, but good. Page not found, 404. Checklist item matches the given query. No checklist item matches the given query. Oh, I wonder if I deleted it. Let's try three. Checklist item. Okay. Uh, hence the problem with hard coding right now, but we're going to get to that. So, okay. So there's some other stuff that we need to do with our templates, right? Is back through and give it... Update views.py to have this. That's cool. So that this, oops, works. Figure out where to drop that in. Um, So checklist item, yeah, so now what we need to do is do our URLs because like I've got that hard coded and that's what was breaking it. One isn't valid because I'd been editing the, wait, why is one valid all of a sudden? Oh, because I hard coded it down here. Uh, so checklist item ID is what gets sent. So this is gonna break, but if I put a three here, it works, okay. Index. So we're not, I can get that out of there. Yeah, I don't like that they put the, like the context here in its own thing, like keep it consistent. Cause if you want to add to it, then you're going to be super long or whatever. Um, So let's put the UR, uh, let's put the, let's make this legit.
Removing hard code on URLs and templates. Okay. Remember when we wrote that in the template, link was partially hard coded. I don't remember that because I didn't do that. URL detail question ID. Problem with hard coding, tightly coupled approaches, it becomes challenging to change URLs on project with lots of templates. I don't totally get this, but this is the part that I actually need to see is here for right now. And also, like, if you're going to end up doing this, start there. Don't do that. Or if you do it immediately. No, just don't. Just say, here's how this works. So here's this. Checklist item ID. Is that going to work? not found. Oops, back up a little more. Keep backing up, keep backing up. You're not backing up. Checklist two, checklist three, check test one. Sweet, sweet. So let's add that where it belongs. Be the right place to add the URLs in. It may not be, probably is. Um, uh, I want to add them later. So I want single, like single paths through this stuff, and I want everything that you add to point to the next thing and to nothing else, and to not have three different things being added. But so right now. Oops, let's go to the home page. Checklist. Checklist item. There we go. OK. Uh, and so the last thing to do here in the next 10 minutes is in the view. that whoops to checklist item I'm gonna rename all this stuff at some point but so that still works come here and then so here I'm just gonna is this how you do outputs What happens if you do that? Still didn't blow up. This is checklist item, right? Number. That's not updating. Why isn't that updating? Checklist item. Why is that not updating? There's our checklists, checklist item, which should be here. 
you have to restart a server if you do template stuff or something. Doesn't seem handy. Okay, and now I'm confused. How is that possible? Checklist, checklist templates. Oh, wait a second. What's going on here? Ha. Found you. Let's see what that does. There's some craziness. And now we do that. There's our text. Ooh, that's actually pretty cool, right? It's automatically converts it to a string for us. Here, let's make this actual. Whatever. And then item giant. Let's maybe make that a three. Uh, and then so if we're passing, if we're passing the context, which has the object, I think that means we can do this and get the ID. Right, because that's part of the model. There you go. And then is done should be there too. Which I think you just call straight with is done. True. Uh, and just to prove that that's working, we'll go into the admin, which we should put it. Yeah, we're going to put a link on the admin real quick, right? Pages, templates. Dadman. <laughs> Dadman. That's kind of funny. Admin. Checklist items. Uh, oh, I want to see... Yeah, we're going to do one more thing, which is I want to see... Uh, I don't remember where we added that. Checklist, admin. Oops. somewhere down there, but this is the easier way to do it right now. Checklist is done. And then so I should be able to do ID here, we think. Nope. There it is. Yeah, so three is done is true. So if we go back here and we back up and we go to checklist item two, 
False, so it's not done. There we go. That's the basics of it. That's sweet. Okay, that's that's real progress. Now I feel like, I, and I'm understanding what's going on. Um, the I've I've got I'm starting to get the mental model of where all this stuff is and how to do it. Uh, so I'm going to run through this uh, a few more times, and I'm so I'm, I'll go through the complete exercise of creating the edit page here and then figuring out how to do the user stuff and that should be it for doing the for doing a tutorial right for doing the for doing the basics um and I'll, I'll look at some testing stuff i still feel like i'm not testing everything that i could be but like this stuff i don't really need to be testing this is just you pass the object to it and you output the object in the html format that you want so like i'm cool with not really having testing there um they were talking about some of the testing about making sure URLs existed, and like that makes sense to me. I think maybe. Um, I mean, you kind of want. To, yeah, actually, it does because you want kind of want to understand like, hey, if I hit, can I hit a known bad URL or a known 404 and actually get a 404 back? I guess. Um, but I mean, there's that shortcut to have that happen. So I mean, actually, what happens if we do a four right here? Yeah, you get a 404. Um, so that's in pretty good shape. Um, page, I should have that. I'll do that when I get the full page stuff edited. Yeah, this is, I'm liking this. This is pretty good and it's pretty fast too. Like it's pretty slick. Like I'm, I really liked Django when I first started messing with it a while ago, but didn't, I just couldn't make it through the tutorial and um, well, I did it like a treehouse course and some other stuff, but I just I wasn't in a in the place to get into it. I guess is probably the best way to say that. So now I'm ready to attack this and actually make it happen because I've got a really specific thing that I want to do, which is to build my own to tools site. So um, yeah, see, cool URLs don't change for excellent arguments. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time making sure my URLs don't change, but I'm uh, it's costing me it's causing me aggravation on my live site right now. Actually, let's open that one like that. We can have that in our list. Uh, okay, so that'll do it for now. I'll be back on later tonight uh, in a few hours to uh, kind of keep working on this and then work a little bit on my Python module stuff that I'm working on to make um, unit tests instead of it always show red at the end to actually show green if there's a success um, or if you get if you if all your tests pass. Um, but this is cool. I made some good progress here, so I'm, I'm digging this. Um, but that'll do it for now. Y'all have a good one. We'll catch you next time and be kind.